Hey, Highland Valley. Welcome to the Journey Summer of Stories. I'm Matt Taylor, Director of Youth Ministries. Throughout the month of June, we will continue to look at different stories throughout the Bible. We want to hear different perspectives from the people of Highland Valley and think about how we can apply that story today. But before we get started, we have an important announcement. Next Wednesday, June 24th at 6.30 after the journey, join us on Zoom as we launch a series of conversations on race under the Congregation's Embracing Diversity Initiative. Reverend Dr. UC Washington will focus on his experience as a pastor and African American in a predominantly white church. The following week, we will jump into a nine session study from Be the Bridge. The Bridge to Racial Unity will help us to continue the discussion. The discussion to help heal racial division in our community, in our country. And we will do this using the Bible. What does scripture say about racial reconciliation? Join us beginning next Wednesday at 6.30 to find out. For more info, visit our website at hvumc.org or contact our office at 501-224-6047. We hope to see you there. Today's story is the Tower of Babel. The scripture comes from Genesis chapter 11, verses 1 through 9. Now the whole world had one language and a common speech. As people moved eastward, they found a plain in Shinar and settled there. They said to each other, come, let's make, let's make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They used brick instead of stone and tar for mortar. Then they said, come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens so that we may make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we will be scattered over the face of the whole earth. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower the people were building. The Lord said, If as one people speaking the same language they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language so they will not understand each other. So the Lord scattered them from there over all the earth, and they stopped building the city. That is why it was called Babel, because the Lord confused the language of the whole world. From there, the Lord scattered them over the face of the whole earth. So, this story, the Tower of Babel, begins with a group of people, descendants of Noah, who are settling in the land of Babylonia. When you think Babel, you think communication problems, confusion. Sometimes what seems to be the simplest of things can be misunderstood, like bring your fish to school day, or draw a plant cell and label its most important parts. Or what about name the quadrilateral? Although this story does deal with a lot of confusion, that's not how we appear to begin. The Bible says the settlers were of one language, of a common speech, so being of one language, one mind, they decided to build a city with a tower. And not just any tower, but a massive tower that would reach to the heavens. Not to glorify God, but to glorify themselves. You see, they wanted to make a name for themselves. They agreed on that. They were of one mind. They had their agenda. So God saw this, saw they had their agenda, and knew they had their minds made up. There would be no getting through to them. They were so caught up in what they wanted, what they knew was the right thing to do, and it would be impossible to convince them otherwise. So he confused them. He confused their language, and they stopped building the city. What the people had come together to do, something that was meant to be so amazing, so grand, so spectacular, a magnificent city with a massive tower that would reach to the heavens, all fell apart. Not necessarily because the city and the tower were a horrible idea, but because why they were doing it. 
they were doing it for their own glory, not for the glory of God. If you look up the definition of babble, you'll see that it's a confused noise made by a number of voices. Does that sound familiar? So often we try to come together, seemingly with one mind, one agenda, our agenda. We seek solutions, order, but instead get confusion, chaos. Is it so bad to be of one mind, one voice? Not if that comes from God. You see, when we put our own agenda in front of God's, we are certain to find ourselves in that state of confusion and chaos. It's only when we put our own personal agendas to the side and do the work of the Lord that we can truly come together and be at peace with one another. So often the will of God is drowned out from the babble, the confused noise by a number of voices. Let's remember to take a moment to listen, a moment to come together, a moment to put aside our personal agendas, a moment to put first the will of God. Good evening, Hutton Valley. My name is Alec Bean. I'll be talking about our scripture today, the Tower of Babel. I have read this story many times, both in the Bible and in a book called The Magic of Reality. Both provide a reason for all the languages spoken in the world today. I think part of the story means that if we work together, we can be unstoppable, but God only wants th that if we are working for good rather than bad, like in this story. For example, the people wanted to be looked up to and wanted to reach the heavens, but instead people could make cures for viruses and diseases like the coronavirus. Also, if we want to reach to heaven, we should do it through Christ instead of building towers and stuff. Hey there, everyone. Uh, my name is Garrett Pritchard. I am the uh, summer intern, uh, summer youth intern this summer here at Highland Valley. Um, unfortunately, uh, this is how I have to introduce myself, and I can't do it in person just yet, but hopefully before too long, the church will open up and I'll get to meet some of you guys. Um, but today I'll be talking about the Tower of Babel. Um, and so in the Tower of Babel, there were these men that had decided that they were going to just build this ginormous town. And they were going to reach it all the way up to the heavens, and they were going to make this name for themselves. Um, and God didn't really like that too much. And so what God did was he went down he changed the language that all these men had spoken. Um, and so they were unable to uh, finish the tower. I mean, if you, I mean, if you imagine trying to like build a house or something, and one person speaks English, one person speaks Spanish, one person speaks Russian, one Chinese, one Japanese, I mean, you, you'll never get it. So I imagine it got very annoying. Um, and so they weren't able to finish the tower, which was God's plan. Um, but in the Bible, the Bible doesn't really clarify what the tower's for. Um, some people, I've heard some people say that it was kind of like a power issue. Like they were trying to uh, admit their power against God show that they were like equal kind of thing. Um, I've also heard that it was this, you know, this huge religious tower that they were trying to like reach up to God with. Um, and I've also heard that it was kind of like this satanic portal that these men were building so that they could reach up into the heavens and into the spiritual realm and just cause all kind of, all kinds of trouble. But the way that I kind of interpret it is these men were trying to build this tower and make this name for themselves for the wrong reason. Um, and I think this kind of translate to, translates to today, too, because a lot of people, they want to make, make a name for themselves through 
you know, how much money they have or, you know, like how popular they are at school, you know, all this stuff that doesn't matter, you know, like won't matter in the long run. Um, and that's just, that's just not what God calls us to do. And that's not what the Bible tells us to do. Um, I mean, what, we should be known for other things. We should be known for being a role model. We should be known for being a follower in Christ, being a disciple of Christ. You know, that's that's what's going to matter in the long run. It's not going to matter how many friends you had. It's not going to matter how much money you have. None of that's going to matter. What's going to matter is your actions, your words, how you treat people, what you do to make sure that you get that you get up what you do to be a real disciple of Christ. Morning. My name is Corbin Cobbs, and I've been challenged to uh, give my interpretation on Genesis 11, 1 through 9, the Tower of Babel. Uh, you know, I think as you go into that passage, uh, one of the things that we see is that uh, the unity of uh, these people that came together, this was family. You know, they came together and they found a place where they could dwell together. And because they spoke the same language, uh, they had great strength and unity. And I think when you think about that uh, and the things that they were wanting to accomplish to build a great city and to really stand out and set themselves apart from other areas, uh, is that there's nothing that we cannot accomplish when there's unity. But here's the issue, I think, that happened when uh, this when these, these people came together is that uh, even though they had strength and unity, uh, their focus uh, was not right. Uh, the focus was on about uh, what they could accomplish, what they could do, how tall they could, you know, build this tower. And, and they, they shifted their focus uh, to not be on God, but to be on themselves. And even in times of unity and strength, uh, great things can be accomplished. I mean, just think about what unity does. Uh, but inside of that, we have to make sure that we do not let the uh, enemy come in and start to uh, sow seeds of pride. And uh, and so because their focus was not on God, uh, he had to come down and he had to uh, really shift things, uh, shift things up and to change the languages. And what that created was confusion. And so we know that God is not an author of confusion. Uh, and so uh, as a result of that, uh, even though they came in with strength and unity because their focus was not right, uh, they uh, they scattered and, and uh, the city that they were building, all of that stopped. And so how do we apply that to, to our lives today? I think that we have to stay unified. Uh, we have to make sure that we continue to uh, have unity. There's power and strength and unity. The, the things that can be done, uh, I mean, it's just, uh, uh, just amazing things that can be accomplished through unity. But through that, we have to make sure that our focus stays right, that it's all about God. It's not about us. It's not about... Uh, how we can glorify ourselves, but through God, uh, through his strength, through his glory, and giving him the honor and praise, uh, great things can be accomplished. Uh, so that's my interpretation of Genesis 11, 1 through 9. Uh, hopefully uh, that resonated with you all. God bless. Good evening. My name is Patty Downs, a member of Highland Valley United Methodist Church. And in reading the uh, Genesis 11, 1 through 9, about the Tower of Babel. You get to looking at it, and these people were wanderers and nomads. They had no home, no place to rest. They constantly moved around, and the one thing they did have in common, other than wandering, was their language. They all spoke the same language. Now, this was in a time of the Mesopotamians. And the Mesopotamians used to build what they called juggernauts, or very tall towers. And the purpose of those towers was so that their gods would come down and be with them. So these wandering people, once they found this land, they thought, man, this is perfect land. We're going to live here as a community. And to show how great we are, we're going to build this tower to heaven so that God can come down to us. Well, God came down, but he didn't come down because he was happy with the fact that they built a tower. He came down because he realized that they had forgotten he was the one in control and that they were not. 
So what he did was make them all speak a different language. And in doing that, he set them up in different communities of like languages. This way they would learn to get along a little bit better than they were when they were all speaking the same language. But if you've ever been in a meeting or in a crowd and everybody's talking to different people on different subjects, we, c we can't understand what they're saying. Well, this was the way it was in Mesopotamia when that Babel, when they were making these uh, towers. Once he confused their language, they couldn't understand what they were speaking. So it was easier for them to go into their own communities. One of the things that uh, we could think about is acts. Acts is a reversal of what we find in Genesis, because that's during the um, period of uh, Pentecost, when the disciples are out preaching about the risen Lord, but they're preaching in their native tongue, but everybody else speaks and hears it in their own language. Now, we are all wanderers in this world. At one time or another, we have wandered aimlessly, not knowing where we are. We spoke a different language. We spoke the language of common people, of hatred, of injustice, of greed. And then we also try to build a tower. Now, our towers don't go all the way up to the roof or the heavens, but we use money, cars, homes, and stuff as our tower to show how superior we are. Well, God comes down and touches us, and we start learning a new language. We start learning the language of love, peace, hope, mercy. We learn Christian language. And in the, doing that, we stop our wanderings because we go to communities that speak the same language as we do. And we end up becoming better people that way. We learn to live and speak the language of the Christian, of Christian love, Christian peace. We may wander, but God will always bring us back into his home because he loves us and we need to learn that God will take care of us when we listen to his voice and speak his language. Please bow with me in a word of prayer. Gracious God, we know we too often strive to seek our own will in this life. We're guilty of building our own monuments, a job, a relationship, to things. Tonight we pray you would guide our hearts to see your will. We pray to build a life that puts you at the center and that our desires don't blind us to your will. Give us peace with your plan. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us for the Journey Summer of Stories, and thank you to everyone who shared with us tonight. Imagine the chaos that must have ensued when the people of Babel were confused and could no longer understand one another. Are we so different? Can we get past the chaos and the confusion? We can when we listen, when we listen and put first the will of God. Thanks and see you next week. Thank you.